All right. Good evening. Uh, my name is Craig Blanchett, and it's another episode of our um, weekly healthy huddle. We do these every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Pacific, uh, 6, 9 p.m. Eastern. And uh, you can tune in each week, and we'll do a um, – a um, well, right now we're doing healthy recipes with Steph and Gigi. And uh, so we've got a recipe to share with you tonight, and then we're going to talk about – uh, just a little bit of kind of some highlights about non excuse me, non exercise activities. Uh, Dr. A calls it the NEAT, N E A T, non exercise activity thermogenesis. And it's basically talking about lifestyle um, exercise. So instead of structured exercise, it's getting exercise through the ways that you move in your daily life. And then um, after that, at 6 30, uh, we're actually going to go into an in-depth version uh, talking about the NEAT chapter in Dr. A's Habits of Health, and we have a really fun game that we're going to play tonight uh, where you all are going to be able to use your, your smartphones to, um, um, as a remote control to play a game with us, so we're looking forward to that. Uh, but without further ado, I'm going to start off. The recipe for tonight is actually called um, fresh basil and tomato spaghetti squash. And so um, Stephanie, who's uh, uh, one of our um, health coaches that's part of our team, and she's also uh, my mother, has been uh, into recipes for years, and so now she has um, healthy recipes. So we're going to jump into that, and then Steph will be on to be able to answer questions. Maybe if you've never thought about using spaghetti squash, um, as a um, spaghetti noodle um, substitute. She'll answer some questions about that. So without further ado, let me get the uh, recording going here. Hi, tonight we're going to show you how to cook a spaghetti squash. There are several different ways you can do it, but the way that I find the easiest is you take a very sharp knife and you poke several holes into the spaghetti squash. Very important step because if you don't, when you put it in the microwave, it will explode and it makes a mess. Anyway, poke several holes. You put it in the microwave for about five to 10 minutes. I usually test it. And when you can get a knife through it, which we will show you as soon as it comes out of the microwave, then it's done enough that you can cut it in half. And then you can kind of cook it more depending on how well you, much you like it cooked. I like it kind of al dente, so I like it so it's just barely shreds, but some people like it cooked a little longer. The squash took about nine minutes, and um, you can see that it's a little bit soft, and it's definitely soft enough to get a knife through it. And there is the squash. Once the spaghetti squash comes out of the microwave, you take a fork and you get all the seeds and um, insides out. It's pretty easy to tell what the middle is that needs to come out. And of course, if you wait long enough and it's not quite so hot, it's a little easier to handle. But And then you've got the just the spaghetti squash left in here, which then you can see it's done enough because it shreds really nicely. This is spaghetti squash with basil and fresh tomatoes and tomatoes and mozzarella cheese. It's actually one of my favorites. I never realized how much I liked fresh tomatoes and basil. You take the spaghetti squash and you um, shred it completely out of the shell into a dish. Once you get it completely shredded into a bowl, you can 
If you like lots of basil, you can put lots of basil. I find I really like basil. And I love garlic in almost everything, so I'm going to put a little bit of garlic. You can put Italian seasoning, you can put salt and pepper, you know, you can season it however you like your squash seasoning. Once you get it all mixed up, you then pour it into a baking dish. And you cover it with fresh tomatoes and mozzarella cheese. And the reason we use mozzarella cheese is because it is the lowest carb and it also has some protein in it. So you're not getting yourself in trouble with as much fat as there is in some of the cheeses that you can use. Parmesan cheese is also a great one. And you then put it in the oven and bake it until the cheese is melted and you have a delicious dinner for about four. The tomato basil spaghetti squash is now done. It was about 30 minutes and this is about four green servings. It has a little bit of protein because of the cheese, but you do need to add some more protein to it. All right, so there we go with the um, the tomato basil spaghetti squash. I'm working on getting the recipe link for you guys that I'll put in the chat window, but I wanted to bring Steph on. And uh, if you guys have a question about um, the recipe there, cooking times, whatever, anything or other ways that you can do things with spaghetti squash, go ahead and um, unmute yourself and ask the question. I'm going to work on getting that recipe set up. Nobody. Pretty simple stuff. Come on. Well, he has to have some question. Okay, Jenny, you're up. Who's that? Oh, Carol, go for it, Carol. Uh, you had a recipe on the challenge last time for uh, like a spaghetti sauce that you put over the spaghetti squash. It was not the same recipe. Do you can you put that on again or know anything about it? Um, I it might still be um like as part of the challenge you can log back in and you can look on the recipes on the right hand side it might still be that i didn't personally see that one so i don't know about it um but um so it's a good question okay thank you yeah yeah i know we've we've done spaghetti squash in the place of noodles basically i haven't made this particular recipe that steph showed um but it looks I mean, that was the first time I've watched it. It looked very different than what I thought it was going to be. Um, and so it um, looks quite tasty. Um, I did a, um, a quick search um, online and found <clears throat> a, um, a website that I'm going to send you guys that has um, – the things it looks like about what she said, tomatoes, basil, garlic, spaghetti squash, and a little bit of um, Romano cheese. And so I think that's what she was talking about, being careful on the five-in-one. So, um, but anyway, there's a, um, a website with that particular recipe. Steph, I'm going to unmute you. Do you have any uh, comments about that particular recipe, any gotchas other than making sure that you poke it carefully first so it doesn't explode? <clears throat> well, that's the main thing with the spaghetti squash is making sure you poke it before you cook it. There's many different ways to cook the spaghetti squash. You know, you can cook, cook it in the oven. You still have to poke it. If you can get it cut in half when it's completely raw, you can cut it in half and take out the seeds and put it upside down in a baking pan. So I just find it all a lot more work, whereas the microwave is quick and simple and easy, and you can get it just as done as you want, and it's just 
And something about the basil and the fresh tomatoes and the mozzarella cheese, you know, I was shocked the first time I ate it because I'd been doing a lot of recipes and it was just like, has so much flavor. Okay. And for the person that wanted to know about the, the spaghetti sauce, if you get Walden Farms marinara sauce, which has no calories and no carbs, you're very, very safe in using that. And you can shred your spaghetti squash, leave it in the shell because it kind of looks cool, or you can take it out and put it in a dish. You can pour the sauce on top, or you can mix it with the spaghetti squash. And if you buy a different spaghetti squash, just look for the one that's the lowest carb. There are some that have some protein. Um, I think Classico is one of them. Um, but, you know, there's lots of different ones. Just get the one that's the lowest carbs. And, you know, if you don't use a ton of it, um, it just gives it a lot of flavor. And you can add chicken. You can add ground turkey. If you're in a hurry, you can take it just a can of canned chicken. It can be very delicious mixed with the spaghetti squash and the spaghetti sauce and a little bit of cheese on top. And you have dinner very quick and easy. And that's the one of the biggest things with cooking um, that I find. And I don't know if you guys are like me, but um, the first step is actually just, my wife actually told me one time, if you just pick a recipe, like when she was doing most of the cooking, I do most of the cooking now. Um, but when she was doing most of the cooking, she just, would you come up with the menu and then I'll go buy it and cook it. I don't have a problem. So the first step I think in cooking is deciding, taking the time to decide what you're going to cook for the week. I think that's 90% of the battle. And then the second piece is one, you're actually cooking it, um, that it's convenient. If there's a lot of steps involved, it, um, you probably won't do it very often because it's, you know, it, it's, it's uh, who wants to come home and work when they've worked all day. And so um, I like recipes that have just a couple of steps, mix some stuff together, warm it up, and and um, oddly enough, I think the recipes with the fewer steps are actually healthier for you. Um, I watched a show uh, on TV this week called it's a it's a series called Cooked, um, C O O K E D, <clears throat> and it's a, like a Netflix series. And um, the one guy, his philosophy was eat anything you want as long as you make it from scratch. And the idea was, is that you won't have ice cream very often and you won't have pies and you won't have Cinnabons and you won't have pizza. You won't have these kinds of foods very often if you're cooking them from scratch because they're so, they're so time intensive and labor intensive. And so when we go to somebody else and they've done all the work and we, we spend money and we get this amazing piece of pie or this Cinnabon or whatever – it's, it's, we, we don't understand what it took to create that. We just spend the money very inexpensively and we're able to eat this thing that took hours to ma in many steps to create. And so it's very interesting, you know, how often would you have ice cream if you had to actually make it before you cooked it? Uh, probably not, not very often. And so it's an interesting strategy. And, and um, he says that things that are, um, have fewer steps and fewer ingredients are generally healthier. Um, uh, and with our lean and green, you have a protein source and a vegetable source, and it's, it's pretty um, basic and pretty healthy um, to eat that way. So anyway, that's just some food for thought. Even things like lasagna, lots of steps in lasagna, lots of calories. seems like with every extra step, it just seems to add calories or accumulate calories. But Martin, you made a dish with spaghetti squash at an event that we um, we did a healthy happy hour at a chiropractic's office, and I'm sure it was similar to this. You want to just give us an idea of what that looked like, so they can uh, the people that are listening um, can have another idea of what you another way to make spaghetti squash. I can definitely talk about that, but can I make a comment about lasagna first? Yes, you can. I think. People get so excited about, I've made lasagna. I'm going to serve you lasagna. They're so excited about it because they spent all day doing it. Someone has to be excited about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look what I made. It's not the people eating it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not 
But anyway, so the spaghetti squash was, uh, what did I make? Um, a chicken, it was actually from the health challenge. So it was a chicken spaghetti squash casserole. Um, pretty simple dish. Basically cook your chicken how you want it. I, I used George Foreman. The spaghetti squash was cook it in the mic. I used the microwave choice and I cut mine in half. I used to cut in half, strip the seeds and then put some cellophane on it, microwave it um, based on the appropriate amount of time. Once you strip that out, or once you get the squash out of the shell, then it was just a really simple, uh, you're gonna saute it with some tomatoes, with some uh, laughing cow cheese, and then some other cheese, or like a mozzarella cheese. Uh, saute that, get the cheese melted in there, put it in a casserole, bake it, put the chicken on top, and bake it for about 20 minutes or 15 yeah. minutes. And it was, well, if I do say so myself, it was really good. Yeah. With the show of hands, if, if you're on here and um, you're sharing a video, who here has had spaghetti squash before? I will pick, I have a picture of that I can bring up. Yeah. So uh, Kim's done it. I've done it. Scarlett, she Scarlett, raised her hand. Jenny, look at you guys. You're so awesome. Yeah, Kathy's had it. Okay, and Carol. Okay, so quite a few have had it. The only time I made it, I cut it in half. I poured a little water in the middle. I put it back together, and then I microwaved it. And the water inside steamed it. And that's that was the the method that I did. And then we just used it as a bed for our spaghetti uh, sauce, uh, low carb, you know, low sugar spaghetti sauce. And that's what we had done. So it looked. Yeah, I can't find it. Yeah, it's okay. I just want to get an idea. There's, you know, some we had it a few times, and then it started to kind of make us feel a little bit not so good. Uh, um, I don't know, it gave us gas, basically. So we stopped um, having the spaghetti squash shortly after our – I started to. never had that problem with it. Yeah. Gas roll, that total prep time was an hour. Prep time, an hour, yeah. And one squash served um, with a nine-inch square uh, dish. Dish. Got it. Yeah. And so um, uh, Ginny asked, um, have you used edamame spaghetti? I haven't. Um, edamame, when you're on the five and one, strangely enough, edamame is soybeans. But it is, it is listed as a higher glycemic um, for when you're on the five and one. Uh, now, when you're not on the five and one, um, I think soybeans, you know, raw soybeans or whatever are fine. But that's something to be concerned with. What we did recently is um, shirataki mushroom noodles are a nice bed for spaghetti. The spaghetti squash is another alternative. And then we've used riced cauliflower. Um, as a bed, you know, uh, that you would do stuff like that. And of course the shirataki mushroom noodles, um, we've used a lot. So those are just some different ideas of things you can put down, um, underneath your, um, you know, stir fry or whatever it is that you're doing. So anyway, well, that concludes the cooking segment. Thank you, Steph, for your, um, your videos. Uh, that was awesome. We are actually, um, when the challenge starts, um, I don't know what, what video we're going to have or what recipe we're going to do for next week, but um, when the challenge starts up again, the 6 to 6.30 slot, we'll be doing a webinar again uh, with uh, David Bush and I. And so we'll, got, we'll get you guys the information because it'll be a different number. It'll be the same number as we did in the last challenge. Um, so for you, Richard, we want to make sure that you get that information so that you're able to tune in to the different number. Um, next week. Actually, you know what? Since I have you guys here, I'm just going to go ahead and give it. So when there is a challenge going on, the um, the meeting ID is 958-807-591. And I'll put it in the chat window as well for everybody. But um, this is the, um, the meeting ID 
uh, that we use when we're in a challenge. The reason why we go to it is because this particular software only gives us 200 slots and we get over 200 people um, when we do the challenge. But I want to um, uh, switch gears a little bit. We're going to move into just a little bit of an overview of the habit of health this week, which is the habit of motion. It's part one of a two-part series. Um, we did part two last week and because we're moving in Dr. A's Habits of Health book from the, the end of the book to the beginning. It's been kind of fun doing it this year. And this is called the NEAT system. And the NEAT system stands for non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So it's, it's you have your structured exercise, which everybody is familiar with, running, jumping jacks, you know, Zumba class, you know, rowing, cycling. Those are all structured types of, of exercise. And uh, a lot of us can actually burn three to 400 calories a day with non-exercise activities. And so if you're strategic about how you, how you live, um, how you go about your day, you can often burn calories without the need for the extra time it takes to go and exercise. Um, the, the days when you have time, great. The days when you don't have time, you can just make some strategies throughout your day. Um, one of the things that I love um, about this particular strategy is, you know, we all love food. Food tastes good. It makes us feel good. There's some emotions connected to it. And so when we exercise, if we can burn three to 500 calories a day um, over our resting metabolic rate, then that means that we can eat three to 500 calories more per day um, over our basal metabolic rate. And so uh, the NEAT system allows us to, um, enables us to burn some more calories. So Dr. A talks about um, there's the six NEAT categories. He calls them the six S's of success. And one of them is stance. So it's how you stand. Instead of sitting, maybe get a, a standing desk at work. Or um, sometimes if you can find yourself, if, if I go outside when I'm talking on the phone, I've done this before, and I found myself like all the way, like two miles away in my neighborhood. And I'm just rolling along, talking on the phone, and you don't notice um, how far you'll go when you're talking on the phone. And so um, um, sometimes people in the summertime, if you're talking on the phone, you can pull over in your car and you can just walk, walk around your car while you're talking instead of just sitting in your car. So anyway, these are different ways of standing versus sitting um, another one, um, so that's stance, how you stand, there's standing, there's strolling, there's stairs, stairs instead of the elevator, samba, which is, you know, kind of having some dancing, and then one of them that I liked uh, really well, it's called switch, and switch covers um, changing from a mechanic, mechanized tool to a manual tool, and so um, I'm curious, um, did anybody come uh, think of some ideas of what you could change out that is mechanized in your life that you could do manually? Anybody want to add something? <clears throat> I can think of like in an airport, they have the moving sidewalks. Just avoid those. You don't really need it, you know? You have plenty of time probably to get to your gate. And... Um, so just walk instead of taking that moving sidewalk. I had some. Yeah, go ahead, Richard. I think probably this this might fall on the stairs, but it might fall on the way you just said about mechanized to uh, manual. Instead of taking the escalator, take the stairs. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Sometimes when I when I go into a Target or a different store, and they have the doors that open automatically, and right next to it, the doors that don't open automatically. I go through the doors that don't open automatically and I'm not changing the world by doing that one thing. I'm burning maybe four more calories. It's not much, but it's more than I would and it's not that big of a deal, right? Little things like that. I think of the can opener, you know, when you twist the can opener versus pushing down the thing and letting it automatically do it. All these can, there's all these conveniences in the world they're trying to make our lives easier. And oddly enough, 
the reality is reality while is. they're making some parts of our lives easier, they're actually making our lives harder. Those little scooters that get you around, you know, oftentimes that takes any exercise that that person might have had and takes it completely away. So, <clears throat> Kim, go ahead. Yeah, I, I think that this chapter I really appreciated because I, I think um, it takes a big um, mind shift, at least it did for me, because I spent the majority of my life trying to, to figure out how can I be more efficient and then um, when going through this chapter and realizing that, that, that efficiency was stealing, you know, calories that I could be burning throughout my day, um, I've really had to make a point of, of kind of reprogramming my brain and, and being okay with being a little less efficient. Um, so like even um, probably the, oh, sorry, um, even the, uh, the active folding laundry, a lot of times, um, I have, you know, especially on rainy days and stuff when I can't get outside to walk, I'll put those away one item at a time just to get some extra steps in. And I figure at least it's like a combination of, of getting walking in, but also getting something done. Um, and the whole time I'm thinking this is so ridiculous and yet it, it really does help. It makes a difference. So, um, yeah, well, that's great. So um, that's going to conclude. That was just a little highlight of the chapter. And of course, we did our recipe. Next week, we're going to be um, touching on chapter 14, which is the first steps in an uh, introduction into a habits of motion system. And so if you do have Dr. A's book, you're welcome to join in. Um, at the bottom of the hour, the segment we're about to get into, um, we're actually going to be discussing in detail chapter 15. Um, we're going to take a whole half hour to do that. So uh, I'm going to conclude our healthy huddle uh, for tonight. And for those of you that want to stay on, um, um, don't go anywhere. We'll get into that chapter, um, chapter 15 shortly. Thanks for joining us tonight, guys.